Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trump Excel. I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how to work with cells and ranges using VBA. So let's get started. If you're using VBA then referring to cells or range of cells is something that you need to do in and out. You need to know the, how to do this really well. In this video we will learn how to do that. Here I have a list of IMDb highest rated movies. I have the ranking here, uh, the movie name, a rating and release date. If you look at the data type, I have numbers here, text strings, numbers again, and these are date, which is again stored as numbers in Excel. Now, I would show you how to select these cells and add new records. So for example, here I have 12 movies, and if I need to add one more movie, then we would, we would see how to do that. Let's first get into the editor uh, VB editor mode. So I would press Alt F11 and it opens the VB editor. Here I have this workbook open and there I have this sheet. Let's first introduce a module. We insert a module here and let me uh, rename this module. I would open the properties window and I would make this add movie. And let me close this and within this uh, let, let's call this sub also add movie. Now uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to select this cell which would be A15 and then I want to enter the number 13 here then I want to go to B15 select it and then enter the value or the name of the movie then again similarly do this for C and D15 as well. So to do that we would use the range object and we have seen range object earlier in a couple of videos as well. Uh, this is what you would use to refer to a single cell or a range of cells and as soon as I've written it you can see that it says cell 1 and cell 2 and it returns a range object. Now we'll see how we can use cell 1 and cell 2. In this case, in this simple example, all I need to do is I need to select A15. To do that I would simply type A15 here and then I would select it. If I run this code, no matter where my cursor is, it would come here and select this cell. Now in this selection, I would say selection dot value is equal to the number that I want to put in here which would be 13. Now let's run this code and I would step into this code. You can either go to the debug drop down and use this icon or you can use the keyboard shortcut F8. When we step into a code, it runs each line and we can see what is happening in the backend. So I would use the keyboard shortcut F8. We come here and as soon as I press F8 again we will see what this thing does. When I press F8 it selects this cell. The cursor comes here and now when I press F8 again it puts 13 into this cell. Now following the similar logic let me press F8 again to come out of the break mode. Uh, let's follow the same logic again. I would copy this paste it here and I would say here in B15 select it and then the value should be the movie name which is Forest Gump and let's do this for all the four cells. So I've copied it. This would be C15 and the value here would be the rating which is 8.7 and finally here in D15 the value here is a date. Whenever you put a date it's a good practice to put it within these hash marks. The reason because uh, the regional settings are different. If you're in the UK your settings would be different. If you're in the US your settings would be different. So say for example if I don't use hash marks and I put 02, 2015 then uh, this may mean uh, 2nd January in uh, UK but it may mean 1st February in uh, the US or vice versa. So uh, the regional settings come into play and if you don't want that then it's a good idea to use hash marks where I would simply type the name uh, the date where the movie was released which is 6th July so I would use the date then the month in three letter code and then the year which is 1994. Now no matter what your regional settings are it would automatically figure in everything. So as soon as I go somewhere else it has figured this in and this would put in the right date here. So I don't need to worry about it. Now let's step into this code. Uh, let me select somewhere else and also delete this. Let's select this part and let's step through this code. So I press F8 
this is selected this value is put in there now this is selected forest gum comes here this is selected the rating and this is selected the date here so this is how you can select a cell and then populate that cell with the required value it could be a number it could be a text string if it is a text string it needs to be within double quotes if it is a date it is recommended keep it between these hashtags uh, these hash marks sorry now uh, if you are a veteran VBA or if you have been working with it you would realize that it's almost always a waste of time to first select a cell and then put something in it and the power of VBA lies in the fact that you can do this without even selecting the cell you can be anywhere in this worksheet and you can have these details entered here so let's see how to do this let's uh, let's add the new movie here which would be inception uh, so in this case let me delete this and let's start afresh here I would say in a 16 where I need to put in the new value I don't want to select it I would rather directly go to value and I would say this should be 14 similarly here range b16 dot value oops, should be the name of the movie which is inception then range C16 dot value would be the rating which is again 8.7 and finally the date which would be in D16 dot value and between hash marks I would type the date which is 16th July 2010 which is a fairly recent movie as compared to other movies in this list let's get out of the break mode first because that's really important and now let's run this code so I would step into this code by using F8 and let's see what happens uh, I'm here somewhere my cursor is here and when I press F8 and F8 again you can see that the cursor is here but the value is entered and the cursor would not move anywhere but the value would keep on entering so when I press F8 again inception comes here then 8.7 and then the date so this is the power of VBA you don't need to select or activate a cell to put a value in it or perform any function for that matter you can give a color you can give a font size you can do anything you want and you don't need to even select it as a matter of fact you don't even need to be on the same worksheet you can be in any other worksheet so let's see how it works when we are in a different worksheet let me come out of the uh, break mode and I would add a new worksheet here sheet 2 and now when I run this code let's step into this code and see what happens I press F8 then F8 again and the value is entered here but this is not my list this is the current active sheet and when I enter these values these are the values that are entered in the active sheet but I don't want that even though I am in this worksheet I want the values to go in here so to do that we would have to qualify the worksheet as well so let's do this let's delete this cell because this these are the values that we would put in here and let's modify our code a little so what we would do is we would say worksheets sheet 1 and we would add this part here what we are doing essentially is we are qualifying a bigger object where we need to refer to the range so I'm asking VBA to first go to this worksheet and then in this range in that worksheet put this value instead of putting it in the active sheet if I don't mention the worksheet this code is run in the worksheet that is active and I don't want that I want this to go into sheet 1 so let me copy these now let's run this code again I'm here in this worksheet let me also delete this let's see what happens so now again I come out of the break mode and now when I press F8 and again now as soon as I press F8 here nothing happens on this worksheet but let's go and check in sheet 1 surely enough the value has been entered now I come back here to sheet 2 press anywhere else 
again go back to the VB editor and press F8 again, 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 and again. And now when I come back to sheet one, you can see that this this value has been entered. These this row has been populated. So you need not even be on the same worksheet. You could be in any other worksheet, or as a matter of fact, you could be in any other workbook. If you are in any other workbook, even then you can run the code. All you need to do is qualify that workbook. You would have to put workbooks uh, and then within double quotes you would have to put the name which in this case would be working with cells and ranges dot xlsx and it would automatically put the value there uh, but make sure that those workbooks are open. Now uh, this is where you have been referring to one single cell and you have been hard coding the number the ranges so for example in this case I have hard coded a16 dot value is equal to 14 but what if I don't know how many records of movies are there in this list say for example there are 20 records and in that case if I enter 14 then that would be incorrect so in this case you can also use the last number and then populate the next given number so let's do this let me delete these movies here and I would what I would do is I would go through this using my code identify this number which is 12 and then add 13 here so to do that let me delete this entire thing and we would do this in the same worksheet so I would avoid using uh, the worksheet qualifier and here I would use again the range object but what I need to do is I need to identify this cell now had I not been using code in in normal worksheet what we usually do is we use control down arrow and quickly we jump to the cell now we would mimic this using the VBA code Oops. so here I would press alt F11 and what I would do is I would use range A1 and I would use the property of end Excel down now if you don't know what this is all it does is it jumps to the last cell in that column which means that if I'm here and I press control down arrow key then it would come to 12 and that is exactly what this does and I can use this value now so for example I know the value of this cell but I don't want to put anything here I want to put something in the next row so I would rather use offset and here I want to offset it by one row and zero column and I want the value for this cell to be equal to this value plus one which would be range a1 dot end Excel down dot value plus one now what I'm doing is let's go through this line again I'm asking VBA to first have a look here range a1 go to the last cell in this column then offset it and come here and then put a value which is equal to this value plus one let's run this code and see what happens so as soon as I run this code it puts 13 here now let's do one more thing let's again run this code and see what happens it puts 14 15 16 17 so you need not do anything this one single line of code would take care of how many rows are there and what needs to be put in the next line now what if I have this number but I now want to put the other records which is in the same row so to do that all I need to do here is I would again use the same thing which is end Excel down but I would change the offset value here so let's make the formula range a1 dot end Excel down dot offset but see what happens when this is already populated I don't need to go to the next row I can simply jump to the next column so I don't need to offset the row I simply need to offset the column and here the value should be the name of the movie which in this case was Forrest Gump and again I can do the same thing here I would just offset it by two columns and here it would be the rating which would be 8.7 now let's run this code and let's see how it works we would again step through this code so f8 f8 
F8 it puts 14 here let me not let me delete it so that we have the right records let's restart again press F8 F8 it puts 13 here I press F8 again it puts forest gump here I press F8 again and put 8.7 here now the benefit of this way of referencing these cells is that I don't need to even know how many records are there I can simply jump and I can take these now obviously you would have to input the name of the movie and the rating but you don't need to worry about the ranking or the serial number or the increment that happens when you go down the row now what if you want to change uh, some other property so in this case we have been entering data but what if you want to say italicize all these movies so in this case we have been uh, using single cells I have been using this value or this value but we have not been using uh, the entire range of cells so let's see how we can do that let me delete this entire code and uh, what we would do is we would select this entire thing and we would italicize it so in, if you do that in a normal worksheet what you do is you press control shift down arrow key and then you italicize it we would mimic this using VBA so here the first thing that I would use again is range I would say a actually no I would say b3 b3 because b3 is where I have the Shawshank Redemption and now we would use this property cell 1 and cell 2 what this means is that when you give cell 1 and cell 2 then it would select or it would perform the required operation on this that entire chunk of cell so for example in this case if I want to uh, change the font for b3 to b15 then I would type b3 comma b15 and now I want to change the font property and within font I want to change italic property and I would make it true now let's see what happens when I run this code when I when I run this code here all these cells become italicized now this is a good way and what we are doing is we are mentioning the first cell and the last cell here if I mention say uh, b15 is to c15 then it would cover this entire range which means that the first uh, first cell reference would be the top left cell reference and the second one would be the top the bottom right cell reference but this is not what I want because to be honest I don't really know how many movies would be there what I want to do is I want to mimic the effect of control shift down even if I add another uh, another record here say inception it would again come down to the last record but if I run the code which I have here then it would always go to b15 because we have hard coded it so let's remove the italic font and let's see how we can do that using VBA so within VBA what we need to do is we need to somehow identify the last available row and we've already done that so what we would use is range b3 let me delete this so that it's quite clear we would use range b3 dot end excel down and now we would use the font property and change the italic property within that now what is happening here is we have the first cell which is range b3 and through this using this we are identifying the last cell in the column and this is some it, this is exactly uh, what we do we are mimicking the control shift down effect but again we need not select any cell we could be here we could be anywhere and the change would take place so let's see how it works as soon as I run the code you can see that these movies names have now uh, an italic font applied to it so uh, this is how you can select a range of cells uh, a contiguous range of cells where there are no blanks similarly you can also select a column so in this case let's say I want to uh, give a red color to this uh, header and to do that let's let's start another sub color header and here again I would use the same thing range uh, this cell which is a2 a2 comma range a2 dot end but in this case instead of excel down we would go to the right because now we need to mimic the effect of control shift right arrow key so I would select excel right dot 
font dot italic sorry not dot font dot italic here it should be the color which should be interior dot color is equal to say vb red and at the same time let's say I also want to make uh, the font color white and bold so to do that I would again use the same thing range a2 comma range a2 dot end excel to the right dot font dot color is equal to vb white and I also want to make the font bold so I would also again copy paste this here and I would make font bold is equal to true now let's see what happens when we run this let's go through this uh, one step at a time so I press F8 F8 and then F8 again as soon as I do this you can see that now it has a red background color now I press F8 again as soon as I do this you can see that the uh, the font color has become white and I press F8 again and the font has become bold so this is how you can select a range of cells and then apply different functions to it you can make it uh, the color you can change the color you can change the font type you can change uh, the font weight now the final thing that I want to show you in this video is how to copy this entire range of cells and copy it some it somewhere else uh, so let's do one thing I would copy this I would create a new worksheet and then I would paste it there uh, so let's let's create a new sub here let's get out of the uh, break mode the sub would be copy cells now I need to select this entire range of cells uh, and one way of doing it is using the Excel to the right Excel to the down which means that you can go like this and it would select this entire range of cells but another way and more effective way to, is to use current region so for example here if I select any cell and I press control A twice then it selects this entire current region so to do that what we would do is we would go to say range and let's say we select a3 then we can go to current region and then we can say copy so this would copy this current region and then we can specify the destination here and what you can do is if you simply put a space bar space character here it asks you the destination right here and let's say I want to copy this not in a new worksheet but in the same worksheet somewhere uh, down here maybe say a20 so I would simply type the destination which would be range a20 and let's see what happens when we run this code when I press this button instantly it copies this entire current region this entire range of cells and put it here now I can also do this uh, by adding a new worksheet and then putting it there so what I can do is here let's say I add a worksheet so I would say worksheets dot add and then I would have to qualify the worksheet here which means that I would say worksheets sheet 1 dot range a3 current region and I would paste it in a1 now what happens is when you add a new worksheet a new worksheet is added and that becomes your active sheet so I copy this and I have to qualify the sheet it goes back without actually going back it just refers to this range of cells copy it and put it in range a1 in the active sheet let's see what happens when we run this code uh, let's step through this so I press F8 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 it adds this new worksheet sheet 4 and now when I press F8 it copies that entire current region here now the problem with copy and pasting within VBA is that it would paste this but it would not 
auto fit the column width so if you have to uh, change the column width and everything you would have to do it separately by using another uh, property which is uh, range and then column width and then auto fit so you can do that but the idea is that you can simply copy paste this data from one sheet to another sheet or even from one sheet to another workbook by qualifying it in and then using uh, the copy property here so the copy method here so you first select the current region and then use the copy method to uh, copy the range of cells and then put it in the destination uh, so this is how you can use uh, ranges and you can refer to cells and ranges using VBA uh, that's it in this video I hope you found this useful thank you and have a nice day